I bought into the idea of business being a very powerful force for change 30 years ago when I was two. And, um, <laughs> and have spent the last 30 years building businesses that are driving social and environmental change in the world from food to fashion to beauty. Um, this is a few of the brands that I've co-created or founded or been involved in in my journey. And what has always fueled me is a common thread um, around love. And that, in the spirit of Khalil Gibran's book, The Prophet, work is love made visible. If you love your work, it's not work. It's love, right? And I think that's what brings us all here together, right? Is this common get around, we're all in this together. We're all part of a global community. And together, we all need to thrive. So this is a little bit about my background. I started in food back uh, 30 years ago. I co-founded a school that's known today as the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, which is the world's largest integrative nutrition school that, that spoke to value and values, kind of a foreign concept. We all knew each other back in the day around the health and wellness and organic and fair trade movements. And today, obviously, it's come a long way. And since then, um, I have started a number of other brands. Um, and I'm going to speak to really my focus in fashion, which has been, for the last 25 years, a world that I have really come to believe is one of the biggest opportunities for transformation in consumer products. You know, people don't realize, you know, they think, oh, well, my food is growing in the supermarket and my clothing is growing in the department store. And they don't recognize the huge impacts that you know, we're having by the choices that we're making and how those are affecting you know, the people that are growing and sewing our products today. So you know, I'm a very passionate ecopreneur. I've built my career on the five Ps. So it's not just about profit in business. How many of you are in business, starting businesses, interested in supporting good business? Probably everyone, right? somewhere along that, that journey. You know, we as consumers have the power to create whatever reality we want. So if we vote with our dollars and we stand behind products, brands, and companies that do well by doing good, we can create a different kind of reality for ourselves. So one of the things that has made a material difference in my world in terms of where does business really start, it's kind of like water for chocolate. It's at the source. And that's metaphoric for the source of who we are, right? When you tap into the follow your heart, trust your gut, you know, what resonates for you, which again is probably a reason we're all in this room today, you know, it's all about how do we not exploit, pollute, destroy, and, and create damaging behaviors that are not good for our children and our children's children. In fact, many of you are probably familiar with the Native American wisdom. You know, we do not inherit this land from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. And Albert Einstein said, you know, we can't solve today's problems with the same consciousness that created those problems. So we need to get into the trenches, and we need to start at the source, start at the bottom, and say, how do we redefine what people know as, you know, those everyday choices that we're making? And so, you know, cotton is where I really sort of found my way. In 1995, I coined the term eco-fashion to fuse the worlds of ecology, social and environmental consciousness with fashion. You know, to demonstrate that these two worlds are not mutually exclusive. You can be stylish and, you know, look at quality and, and hand and softness. You know, you, there was kind of this prejudice when I started that, you know, if you were conscious, you had to just reject popular culture. And if you were, it was like the New Age movement. And if you were into, you know, fashion and good food and, you had to, you know, you kind of almost push away this, the tree hugger mentality. And I was like, wait, but I'm that person. 
You know, I live at this intersection of, you know, style with substance, or, you know, I want no compromise. You know, I want to make choices that are, are things that resonate for me on a personal and a professional level. Um, so, you know, for those of you who aren't familiar with what happens in the cotton industry, you know, while the retailers and the brands are taking their huge margins, who's getting hurt are the people that are actually at the ground of, you know, making our products. And so going into the trenches and recognizing that, you know, in India as a starting point where much of the cotton is grown around the world, the three biggest cotton growing countries are the U.S., India, and China, and mostly smallholder farmers. And they get lured in by a lot of what they're told by, you know, companies that have financial interests. And at the end of the day, these farmers, they can't support their livelihoods. They can't put food on the table. And they're going into a state of despair where they're actually drinking pesticides and committing suicide. Every half an hour in India, a conventional cotton farmer commits suicide. And it's not so much the chemicals. When you talk to these farmers, what really is important to them is making a living. It's about putting food on the table and supporting their families. You know, it's about making sure that, you know, they can do what they love and keep their lives simple, but have their basic needs met. It's, you know, it's such an obvious thing, but here we are in America, you know, buying fashion with no thought about the impacts that it's having, not to mention the environmental impacts, which is another huge part of this. You know, 10% of the world's carbon footprint comes from the fashion industry. 20% of the world's freshwater pollution comes from the fashion industry. You know, and that of course affects all these third world countries where they're depending on that water. If you go to China, you can actually tell what color the factories are dying by the colors of the rivers. And these are the rivers that the, pe the local people are, you know, drinking, washing, living with. Right? So we have a responsibility to start thinking about this category. And I feel so grateful being here and so excited because, um, you know, I've been doing this a long time and I was approached by Fairtrade USA in the early 2000s, you know, not to age myself. Um, and I spent seven years working with Paul Rice and Fairtrade USA on writing the Fairtrade textile certification which, you know, was a bit ahead of its time. I mean, you know, even with eco-fashion, sustainable fashion, you know, environmental and social, people were like, what? Who? Why would anyone care about that, you know? And there were all these stigmas that, you know, if, if you were thinking about that, you were giving up something. And so, you know, this, this certification has come a very long way, and it's so exciting to hear the latest updates that, you know, there are 47 factories around the world today that are certified fair trade. That's huge. You know, and that's in 12 different countries. And there are over 50 brands today that have fair trade certified textiles. So look for them when you're shopping. And again, as many people have said today, vote with your dollars. So back in my first brand was called Under the Canopy, and it's this whole idea that we all live under the canopy of this planet's ecosystem and in this world together, right? It's like, ah. <laughs> um, and, you know, for me, it's, it's, you know, not about this or that. It's about this and that, right? And so that robe in that bottom right corner is the first fair trade certified garment um, from Fair Trade USA in the world, and very, very proud of that. And you can buy that at Bed Bath and Beyond. I mean, literally, this is not you know, you have to be in some elite group to buy a Fair Trade certified product. The idea is, you know, it's not why, it's why not. Why wouldn't you, right? Um, how many of you are familiar with what happened in Bangladesh in 2013, Rana Plaza? Okay, great. 1,133 innocent workers lost their lives in one moment because of 
horrific working conditions and people who didn't care and American brands that wanted to just you know, drive price down as low as they could possibly go. Um, so I'm on the board of, of Fashion Revolution and um, you know, this past year we had over 720 million impressions um, with the hashtag who made my clothes. So if, you know, if you're not familiar with fashionrevolution.org, sign up, wear the change you wish to see. Um, you know, business as usual in fashion is just not acceptable. And, you know, when you see, and it, it just continues, you know, there was a big fires in Bangladesh even a few weeks ago. And, you know, these are people making our garments and they're, they're being slave labor, like it, it exists still in the fashion industry. So we need to all join hands and um, create a win-win solution, you know, where one plus one equals 11, right? We're stronger together than we are apart, but these people across the world, they need us to support them to be a part of a better solution. And so just to kind of wrap a bit, you know, I started a farm project in India called Reset, Regenerate the Environment, Society, and Economy Through Textiles, to really be a solution provider for, you know, this mess in fashion starting at the source and figuring out, you know, the greatest asset we have in this movement today as an entrepreneur, as someone who is, you know, using business as a, a powerful vehicle for transformation, you know, the greatest opportunity is we have the internet, we have social media, you know, we have the ability to share great stories, to take farm to finish fashion and talk about all the good things that we're doing, embed transparency and hopefully soon blockchain technology to be able to, you know, communicate this amazing shift that we're undertaking. And I'm, I'm very optimistic. Um, I spend a lot of time speaking to the media. I do a lot of, you know, storytelling from source to story because I think that's what it takes. And, and there was a day where, you know, it was like literally pounding the pavements on desk sides, you know, with fashion editors or business editors. But today we have the ability to tell the story through so many other amazing vehicles, you know, Instagram and Insta Story and Twitter. And I have a book that I just published called Eco Renaissance. The premise of the book is really through the lens of design, we can change the world. That means with great taste, you know, whether it's ice cream with Ben and Jerry's or, you know, honest tea or it's fashion, you know, we need to lead people through, you know, not feeling like they're giving up something or there's deprivation or there's sacrifice, but adding value to the products that we're buying and the companies we're supporting and the products that we're getting behind in the sense that, you know, there's so much more than just that taste or that style or that functionality or that scent. There's let's go deeper, let's go down that rabbit hole and let's look at fair trade and ethical practices and treating people the way we'd want to be treated along the way. So thank you all for being here. Very grateful.